is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy update. It's the beginning of April, so time to go back and have a look at March and let you know how we've been getting on. But before I give you all the stats, oh, I wanted to share with you some of the thought processes that I've been going through. I've been thinking about this month's video and thinking, you know, what sort of clickbait title can I put? Because I like to get some more views, I like to get some more subscribers, you know, it is a YouTube channel. But every time I think about doing that, every time I think about how am I going to encourage more people to watch this video, I sort of give up and think, that's not what I want to do. I want to convey the message. What is the message for the video? What's happened this month? And that's what really happens with these videos, that there are, there are very few months where it's boring, where there's nothing happening, where there isn't a story or a message to tell. So th this one's quite easy. This month's video is about having a net credit bill. So what's better than cheap energy or free energy? Getting paid for energy. So yeah, before I get into the stats, this month is the first month we have imported lots of energy from the grid, had lots of solar energy, and not paid a penny for it. So much so, we've actually been given money by the energy company for what we've exported. So it is everything for free. Free heating, free electric car charging, free hot water. I, I just can't believe it. I mean, it's been wonderful to report over a few months and few years that we've been having, you know, very low energy bills. And that's the wonderful part about uh, solar panels and batteries and electric cars and cheap energy tariffs. All those things combined, going electric, brings those energy bills down. But, but now to have a profit, to not just have low bills, but no bills and actually a profit from it, seems incredible. But it's the sort of message that I want to convey. And this is... I guess the crux of what these videos are about, it's describing and documenting what I'm doing and how I'm analysing and implementing things for maximum benefit, not just financial benefit, because while I think about my pension and while I think about keeping my bills low, which feels wonderful from an energy independence point of view, you know, I get energy bills once a month and I'm happy to get them to see the content. I mean, can you imagine that? I'm happy to get bills and that mental wellness, that good feeling, is a really big benefit of going electric with solar panels, batteries, electric cars, electric heating, all of those things. But it's more than that. The more I focus on trying to keep the cost down and the price down, the more I'm automatically being green. So although some people think of me as a bit of a green warrior, you know, he's so into his solar panels and batteries and electric cars, it's not about that. It's about the independence, the good feeling from it. And the stats. I love the data and the stats. But I automatically become very green in what I'm doing. Um, it doesn't matter whether I am consuming my own solar energy or giving it out to the grid so other people are using it. The fact I'm generating it is green. The fact I'm using electric cars is better than petrol and diesel. It is greener. But these things I'm doing to save me money. And solar panels and batteries, you know, all of those things are an investment on keeping my bills down for the rest of my life. That's the plan with these things. So I've reached an age in mid fifties where I'm retired and I don't want big bills and I don't want to be worried about big bills and inflation and all those sort of things. Electricity is now my power source for everything, for cars, for heating, for hot water, for the house, for absolutely everything. And I get free energy. So it just seems to be an obvious thing. I mean, what other fuel can you get for free? Do you ever go to a petrol station and they give you a free fill up? Do you ever uh, go to British Gas and they say, do you know what, we'll let you have all your gas for free this month. It just doesn't happen, it's not ever gonna happen. Whereas electricity is getting cheaper and greener the more wind we implement in the country, the more renewable energy we implement. And if you add your own, you can not just get the price down, but you can contribute to giving energy into the grid and get paid for it. It really is possible to have zero energy bills. And I think that's the real message I want to convey with these videos. Not just that, you know, aren't I lucky? I've got some money to invest in these things. I can do these things. I want to show the potential. Because you don't have to do it to the same scale that I do. You don't have to do it all at once. And it is actually cheaper now. It's cheaper to buy solar panels and install them than it was when I did it. I mean, for goodness sake, a 400 watt solar panel now, it's 50 quid. So... <laughs> It's not a lot of money. Okay, the installation cost and paying for the labor and the cables, those bits are more expensive, but batteries and solar panels themselves are actually cheaper. 
What I want to convey in my videos is the potential benefit. And then people can make choices, informed choices about choosing, do I spend my money here or do I invest over here for some fun, some data, some mental health goodness of not worrying about energy. Um, it's just a great thing to be doing and a great way of choosing, choosing to go electric, choosing to have an electric car. So every time something changes, you know, a gas boiler or an oil boiler, a car or a television or an oven needs changing, it really is a great time and opportunity to think, can I do it a little bit more efficient? Can I buy something that will save me money and set me up to be more efficient? And for me, that's working really well because my power usage is coming down, my energy production is going up, and the amount of money I'm spending is coming down to the point where I'm actually being paid now for the energy I'm generating. It's, it's an incredible thing. One of the things I want to cover at some point is a cheaper installation. I'm looking at putting some garden solar panels in them. I'm not going to be spending a fortune on them. So I would like to show a way of adding solar that's not as expensive as rooftop solar. And that's what I'm exploring at the moment. But anyway, uh, less about what am I doing and what's the purpose of these videos. I really hope you enjoy this video uh, and the stats which are proving that March has been the turnaround month that I was hoping for. In December, I moved away from the deemed export of a FIT tariff. I moved on to an export tariff where I'm now paid a fixed amount for every kilowatt hour I export, and I don't get any export money from the FIT tariff that I had before. And December, January, February was looking, oh, you know, have I made the right decision? It's not really making a tangible difference. But of course, that's winter when I'm not generating a huge amount. What's uh, showing up now is that March has been the break-even point. And if this now goes forward as I planned, I, I did a video a while ago where I was estimating that moving to an export strategy rather than a self-consumption strategy could save me about £500 a year or bring me an income of £500 a year, whichever it's going to be. Now this month, uh, as you'll see, it's a chunk of money. Uh, you know, it's not huge, but, but it's, it's enough. But if I multiply that by the number of months left where I'm expected to export a lot of energy, so April, May, June, July, August, September and October, if I include that sort of money and a little bit higher across those months, you know, we are talking between 300 and 500 pounds a year better off. So this change of energy tariff has been a really good one. So if that's what you're interested in, how to maximize my money, how to maximize um, what you're doing, then this video is probably a good one to watch in conjunction with my analysis about why I should have done this in the first place. So have a look back at uh, my older videos and see what I thought I was going to achieve and how I was going to achieve it. Go back to these stats, have a look and see how it's turning out and whether it's working out accurately or not. I think it's coming together now, it really is. So I love this journey. I, I love that every time I look at things, things are slightly different. The only worry I have is Will it come to an end? Will I stop making changes? Will I stop finding new things to analyze? Okay, here we go. Here's the stats for the month of March. Yes, my mid-month uh, review was giving the impression that it wasn't gonna be a very good month, but lo and behold, the last week of March is often, so many years, it's often the brightest week of March. And it's been the same this year. So I've had consistently 20 kilowatt hours on most days. I couldn't actually say what the average is over the last week, but it's been good enough to raise up the kilowatt hours to be very, very decent. So here we go. Here's the stats for the month of March. Hope you enjoy it. Starting with solar generation, 605 kilowatt hours for the month. That's all three arrays. But as you can see from this first chart, we've got a bit of a problem here with Home Assistant. Uh, I corrupted the DB file, the main database, and lost data from about the 12th of March going backwards. So a couple of years worth of data, all gone because I had a corrupted file. Uh, I know how I corrupted it. I was messing around with um, some temperature sensors, deleting them, re-adding them, reloading them. And uh, I think I was doing it too fast. And uh, yeah, too many things going on at once corrupted the database. The good news is that I update my spreadsheet on a daily basis. I've still got all of my data, so I can still do these monthly updates with accurate data, even if it's not in Home Assistant. And of course, the original apps still have all of the data as well. 
The breakdown of that 605 kilowatt hours is 316, 176 and 113 for the three arrays, which I'll uh, cover in a little bit more detail in just a moment. But as you can see from 2024 on the right hand side, it's actually the second worst month of March that would have had out of six years so far. Our main south facing array, which is 3.9 kilowatts of panels with a 3.68 kilowatt inverter, a Solus inverter, that was 316 kilowatt hours. And we're peaking out at 20 kilowatt hours a day there, which is good news for me because I know that array is capable of 30 kilowatt hours in a day. So it shows me the extra potential that we've got coming up in the more sunny months ahead. Our other Solus inverter, the 2.5 kilowatts, that's uh, three panels over my garage and four panels on the east gable wall. That generated 113 kilowatt hours. And our third array, that's Solar Edge, 2 kilowatt inverter, 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. As you can see in the middle there with the dark green, it's still the second worst March we've had, 176 kilowatt hours. Bit of a story here with Solar Edge. Their charts are just getting worse and worse. I have put a support call in about their software and how their latest release is showing inaccurate numbers and not being very helpful. They're actually sending me out a new um, watt node meter because they believe that uh, it's a watt node meter that's causing the problem. They're wrong, of course. It is their app. It is their coding. Uh, the data in the database is fine, but they'll find out eventually. I'm having to go along with the flow and uh, let them swap out the watt node meter to prove that it's not the problem. On top of the 605 kilowatt hours that we uh, generated from solar panels, we imported 524 kilowatt hours for the month. That's with Octopus Intelligent Go, and that was for the ripe old cost of £52.38, including the standing charge. Our strategy now isn't to self-consume the solar energy, but to export it and instead use as much cheap energy from Octopus that we can, the 7 seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour energy first thing in the morning. So we exported 459 kilowatt hours for a total value and income of £68.70. And on top of the export, we also had some savings sessions. So we generated 17,000 octo points, which converted to £21.25. In summary, that's a bill of £52.38, a credit for export of £68.70, and another credit for £21.25 from our savings sessions, a net bill and net credit of £37.60. That's free energy for the month using absolutely everything, including charging our cars, and they gave us £37.60 back. Deemed export, if I'd have kept on that, with the fit tariff would have been £11.06 credit. But also my grid use would have been lower, I estimate by about £15. Without doubt though, this is the cheapest energy month that I've ever had. They've actually paid me some money instead of me paying them money. On the right hand side of this chart that's showing all of our solar generation that we've had so far for the last three years, March 2024 is a nice uplift from January and February. So we're starting to look like it really is spring. Higher solar values are on the way. This chart from uh, Victron is showing my solar use. Where did I actually use the solar energy? Red is export, blue it went to the battery, and yellow at the bottom it's solar consumption in the house. So as you can see, the house consumption is consistent, the battery is really small, most of our energy is going out to the grid. Time for a new statistic then. How much of our solar generation did we export? 458 exported, 605 generated is 76%. We exported 76% of what we generated and only consumed 24%. Normally that would seem that we're not being very green, but it actually is. This chart again from Victron is showing our grid use. Where did we use that grid energy? Blue, it went to the battery. Yellow, it went to the house. So what you can see here is our grid use was very consistent going to the battery and not a very high amount. In fact, if you look around the 23rd to 27th, it was a tiny amount. And there's a good reason for that. We were doing a test. We went away for a few days and I decided to turn everything off and have it absolutely minimized to see how small our energy usage would be without any actual people using it. Just the house background load. 
that low battery use is very visible here in this Victron chart uh, in the blue area at the top. So it's using the scale on the right hand side of the graph. The higher the blue area goes, we charge the battery to 100%. The lower it goes, the lower depth of discharge, the more we discharge from the battery. So as you can see around that period where we went away, 23rd to 27th of March, it was absolutely tiny. I didn't charge the battery up and we didn't discharge it. So the thin amount of energy used with the battery really does show how little the battery is used just to support the house on its own. It's literally only between midnight and five in the morning, 5.30, that we're charging the battery. And it's only between 6, 6.30 in the afternoon now when solar ends and midnight when we're actually using the battery to support the house load. But how much is that house load? Whilst away from the house, we were importing between 1.6 and 1.8 kilowatt hours from the grid. The total house load, though, was 3 to 3.1 kilowatt hours each day. 3 kilowatt hours divided by 24 hours, that's 125 watts on average over the entire day. Pretty good. So that's just the internet router, the home assistant hub, the My Energy hub, and our fridge freezer. A couple of LED lights, but that is it. Everything else was off. Going back to a monthly view, this chart is showing consumption and where the consumption came from. Most of it in red is from the grid, a small amount in blue coming from the battery, and that base load for the house is coming from solar energy in yellow at the bottom. So again, it's showing our strategy. Most of the energy we're consuming is coming from the grid at 7.5 pence, a little bit from the battery overnight, and then the base load from solar, and then every other bit of solar that we have, which you can see in this chart from my energy in yellow at the bottom, it's going out to the grid so we can export it for 15 pence a kilowatt hour and make a profit. Normally I'd now give you a breakdown of all our energy usage by device but because it's uh, not accurate because Home Assistant corrupted that file I can tell you that our total heating cost of all devices was 126.26 kilowatt hours 126 kilowatt hours last month it was 192 and the month before 335 so at 126 kilowatt hours it's a lot warmer, isn't it? Spring is here. We're not needing the heating anywhere near as much. Just to reinforce that we're exporting more than we normally would, this chart is showing export going back to January 2020. And as you can see, every other March and every other year, we're exporting a lot less because we have been attempting to consume all of our solar energy. Now we're trying to export it all. It's shot up and it really does stand out. It's more like a summer month. And finally, the My Energy Summary chart, which figures I don't usually use because they're not quite as accurate as the other ones I'm presenting, but it is showing that we're 23% green. Remember, we're exporting 76% now of our solar generation and only self-consuming 24%, which normally sounds bad, now sounds really, really good. The more we export, the better. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button now. It really will help the channel. Hope there was something in there that you found entertaining, enjoyable, or informative with the stats. Let me know in the comments, as always, how you've got on, if you've got solar and uh, electric heating, electric cars, all those sort of things. Let me know your stats and how they compare. Uh, I do like to hear it. You get a better view for what's going on when you hear reports from different people, different countries, different counties, different areas, different systems, you know, east and west, people with different uh, technology. It is great to see that myriad of information. It gives you a really good picture of what can be achieved. Thanks again. See you again soon for more entertaining videos about going electric. Bye for now.